Hey everybody, this is Andre here with the Kevin Breeze channel, and in this video, we're going to be doing a comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A72 and the Samsung Galaxy A52. Let's get started. So the Samsung Galaxy A72 has a 6.7 inch 90Hz Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 394, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 84.4%. We got a hole punch here for the front facing camera and this camera is 32 megapixels. The Samsung Galaxy A52 has a 6.5 inch 90Hz Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 407, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 84.6%. This phone has a really similar camera to the A72 as well, hole punch which is really nice looking, and this camera is also 32 megapixels. So the main difference between these two phones as far as the display goes is as you can see the size of the display, the A72 is a little bit bigger, not by a whole lot, but it's definitely noticeable with a 6.7 inch display versus 6.5 you're definitely gonna get a little bit more space with the A72. So if you're doing a lot of content consumption and stuff like reading or photo and video editing where you really need to see those little details, the A72 might have a little bit of an advantage here just because the display is bigger, but both of them have a really high quality. Not only do they have super AMOLED displays with really good resolution, but they also have 90 hertz displays, which means the motion on the screen is gonna be a little bit smoother. So if you're scrolling through things, you can see there, it's a little bit faster than you might expect. And if you're watching videos or playing a video game, something like that, then that 90 hertz property of these displays is definitely gonna come in handy there as well. So both of these phones have 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, which is a really good amount of storage. You're gonna be able to do a lot with these. With apps in the system itself just getting larger and larger as time goes on and new updates are created, it's good to have more storage than you think you need. Back in the day, 64 gigabytes was a whole lot of space, but now that's actually a little questionable. I have had phones in the past where my capacity, of course, was around 256 gigabytes, something like that, but I still used up over half of it, so it's definitely a good thing to have as much space as you can get. At the end of the day, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So I'm glad that both these phones have over 100 gigabytes of storage. Unfortunately, neither of these phones have wireless charging, but both of them have fingerprint scanners on the display and face unlock as well, so you can use whichever one you prefer. I actually like to use both of them. In some situations, one might work out better, and other situations, the other one might work. It really just depends on what you're doing. So it's good to have both, whereas some phones only have one. Even the iPhone doesn't have a fingerprint scanner, which I think is a really big drawback for that phone, because face unlock is not always convenient. You can't use face unlock in your pocket, obviously, but you can use a fingerprint scanner in your pocket or when you're not looking at it. It's just a lot more convenient to have, but on the other hand, face unlock is great too if you're in a situation where you have to do things a little bit more hands-free. And plus, these fingerprint scanners do look really nice too, so I do like that. Let's go ahead and give these a try and see how they perform. So we're gonna start off with the A72. That was really fast, one more time. So that was really fast and responsive. I have no complaints, it does its job really well, and it also looks really nice. Now we're gonna try out the A52. One more time. So that was really fast as well. They're almost the same. I did notice the A72 is just a tiny bit faster than the A52, but overall the difference really isn't significant enough for it to really matter a whole lot. At the end of the day, both of the fingerprint scanners not only do their job really well, but they do look really nice and give the phone a nice modern touch. Now taking a look at the back of the phones, the A72 has a 64 megapixel rear camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, an eight megapixel telephoto lens, and a five megapixel macro camera. It's really nice that this phone has a telephoto lens because that is one of the things that I was hoping this new generation of phones would get. 
I'm not quite sure why there's even a macro camera on this phone if there's a telephoto lens too, since the telephoto lens can basically do the same thing, but since it's not really taking up space or anything, I don't mind it being there. With the A52, we got a 64 megapixel rear camera as well, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. So this phone doesn't have a telephoto lens, which is a little disappointing. It does have a macro camera, but in my experience, in my opinion, I feel like a macro camera is mostly useless. The only thing you can really do with it is take those close-up pictures. You can't zoom in or anything like that like you can do with a telephoto lens. So here, I feel like it would have just been a better value if they put a telephoto lens on this phone instead of a macro camera. It is too bad that this phone doesn't have it, but at least it does have the ultra wide camera and a depth sensing camera, which is going to make portrait mode just that much better. These are a couple pictures shot with the rear camera of each phone. As you can see here, they look really similar, but I do notice a little bit of a difference. The A72 has a slightly brighter and more vivid image. Compared side by side, you can definitely see it, the colors on the photo taken by the A72 are just a little bit stronger. The brightness is a little bit better too. Whereas with the A52, the picture is still really good. I would use this camera for pretty much anything I'd need. But at the same time, when compared side by side, it doesn't quite have the vividness or brightness as the A72's picture does. So I think that is something to be aware of. Again, they are really similar, but this difference is still there. Now, as far as video mode goes, both of these phones are able to shoot in 4K in both the rear and the front cameras, so either of them will be a really good option for videos. As far as photography and videography goes, pretty much anything you need, these phones are going to be able to handle. But as you saw in that photo comparison, I would say the A72 is going to have a slightly better quality video as well. But that being said, the A52 is not going to be bad either. They're both really going to be great. So if you want a phone that can take really good pictures and high quality videos when you need it to, then either of these phones, again, would be a really good option. Internally, the Samsung Galaxy A72 is getting 8GB of RAM with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G processor. We ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on the phone and it came back with a single core score of 553 and a multi-core score of 1657. The Samsung Galaxy A52 is getting 6GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G processor as well. So it's the same processor. That being said, the RAM and of course the processing power is slightly lower. Coming back with a single core score of 538 and a multi-core score of 1559. So the difference is not huge by any means, but it's still going to be there. The most important takeaway from this is the A72 does have 2 gigabytes more RAM than the A52. So when you're doing things that are really taxing on the processor, like video editing or high performance gaming, then that's really where you're going to see the difference. If you're just doing things like browsing the web, you're probably not going to notice very much of a difference, if at all. Just to give you a better idea of the difference in these phones' performance, I'm going to do a little demonstration. So we're going to start by opening Google Chrome. So that was pretty much the same. There was definitely not that much of a difference there. We're going to try a web page and see if this is consistent. So again, that was basically the same. We're going to try one more. So in that one, the A52 pulled everything up just a tiny bit faster. So you can see there's really not that much of a difference in the speed of these phones when you're doing a basic activity like web browsing. Now, if you're playing a high performance game or editing a video on an app that takes up a lot of RAM, then the A72 is going to have an advantage just because it has more RAM than the A52. But other than that, these phones having the same exact processor are going to be the same. Now the A72 does have a little bit of an advantage in the battery with a 5000 milliamp hour battery supporting 25 watt fast charging versus a 4500 milliamp hour battery also supporting 25 watt fast charging. So it's not a huge difference but it is a difference all the same. If you want the best biggest battery possible then the A72 is going to be the one. With the 5000 milliamp hour battery you really can't get bigger than that. Whereas, on the other hand, the A52 does have a slightly smaller battery, 
but it's still a pretty good battery. 4,500 milliamp hour battery is definitely not small by any means. So it really just depends on if you want the biggest and best one, this might make more sense if you're on the go a lot and don't always have the chance to plug in your phone, but still need to use it throughout the day. That would be a good time to get the biggest battery available from the A72. But otherwise, the 4,500 milliamp hour battery in the A52, especially being able to use a fast charger, this really is gonna hold up. One thing I'm really excited about with both of these phones is that they have some extra features that weren't on previous models and usually aren't on budget phones to begin with. Both of them have NFC, the technology behind Google and Samsung Pay, which is a really nice thing to see. When it first became a thing, really only flagship phones had it, and then it slowly started to trickle down to those mid-level phones, and some entry-level phones even have it now. The other thing both these phones have is dust and water resistance. Both of these phones actually have water resistance up to one meter for 30 minutes, so that's another thing that's really exciting to see. In the past, a lot of mid-level phones, even the ones with really high-end features and really good quality displays and processors and all of that, didn't have dust and water resistance, but now it's finally starting to make its way over to these mid-level phones that aren't quite flagships, but really aren't cheap phones either. So that's really nice. Now in conclusion, which of these phones is better? I would say for almost all intents and purposes, these phones are just the same. They have the same kind of features, the same processor, pretty much everything. They even look really similar, except of course, for the purposes of comparison, we did get them in different colors. But other than that, they really have the same design. Now that being said, in every area, there is actually a difference. The A72 is the better device. It has a slightly larger battery, a slightly larger display, a very slightly better camera, and a little bit more processing power on paper at least in practice as you saw in that demonstration it really doesn't make a difference but it does have more ram so if you're doing a lot of multitasking or if you're doing things that are a little bit more taxing on the processor like gaming then that difference is going to show up so overall the a72 is a better device but really in most situations, these phones are practically interchangeable if you prefer a larger screen and like the look of the A72's camera a little bit better or just want the biggest battery possible, then the A72 is gonna be the phone for you. But in general, if you really just want a lot of storage, a really high quality camera, a great display, and some nice features that are usually just on flagship phones, then you're not gonna go wrong with either of these phones. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.